morning, y'all. Pastor Shane, Rogue Pastor. Jumping on here at least to give a devotional for this week. And our devotional comes again out of our Where True Love Is book. Okay. And it says, Jesus commands the consumption of blood. Let's go to the scripture. Scripture John 6, 30, 53, 61. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless you eat of the flesh, the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him, as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? In this translation, this section is titled, Many Disciples Turn Away. The disciples must have been terribly scandalized by Jesus. His words. He knew it and asked if they found the idea offensive. Because they were good Jews, they were offended. And here's why. In Leviticus 17, 10, 12, it says, If anyone of the house of Israel or of the aliens who reside among them eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood and will cut that person off from the people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you for making atonement for your lives on the altar, for as if it is the blood that makes atonement, Therefore I have said to the people of Israel, No person among you shall eat blood, nor shall any alien who resides among you eat blood. So, here we go. Jesus knew the scriptures well enough to correct well-educated Pharisees and teach in the temple. Yet, here he demands something which goes directly against the law of Moses. Talk about drinking blood would have been shocking and revolting to the group which was raised to keep kosher. Blood was not to be consumed. Whether you review communion as being your symbol, as containing the real presence of Jesus, or as transformation of bread and wine to his body and blood, doesn't really matter in this context. We're talking about the understanding of blood in Jesus' day and the reaction of his disciples. Many of them turned away. Jesus said to these scandalous things within the context of long-standing beloved liturgy, prayers over bread and the cup at the Passover meal were well-established standards and still are so Jesus had the audacity to change prayers which had been prayed for generations and to tell them to drink his very blood. Both of these things were shocking violations of Jewish law and custom. It's, um, it's a miracle any of the disciples remained. St. Isaac of Syrian. If zeal had been appropriate for putting humanity right, why did God, the word, 
clothe himself in the body using gentleness and humility in order to bring the world back to his father. So here ends our devotional reading for today. I wish you all a wonderfully blessed Thursday. And now may you go in peace. And have a blessed day. And don't ever forget to get new hope rising.